Hi, I'm Dr. Ludi Sosenko, provider of oral appliance therapy for the treatment of snoring and apnea. Today I'll be demonstrating and discussing how to advance your Respire Pink AT device. It's a Herps device by the Hoyu Company. This is what it looks like. It has two movable uh, top and bottom pieces with arms on the side, giving a lot of movement, um, a lot of lateral movements. It's a great device. Uh, today we'll be reviewing a little bit more on that. Um, make sure you check the resource link for this particular device for the cleaning instructions and a lot more specific information regarding this device. Um, a few things just want to bring up that um, when you are adjusting the device, you are actually advancing that lower segment. You are not making it tighter. You're not making it looser. A lot of people think that they're going to be changing the fit when they're adjusting their device. They're not. They're just bringing it that lower segment more and more forward, opening up the airway more and more. So that's kind of what, what's happening on that process. Um, secondly, um, definitely you want to um, never advance unless you're comfortable at your current setting. So you definitely want to be no lingering pain or discomfort. You've kind of got it pretty well, you know, all the basics. Um, you're, you're feeling good with sleeping with it. And then now you can start advancing if your symptoms are still there. If you're still snoring, tired, fatigued, um, poor sleep quality, okay? Um, and then lastly, make sure you're talking to your dentist. Uh, he or she might have a little bit different instructions on the frequency of advancing this device. Um, the instructions for the actual uh, advancing is pretty much similar. It's, it's going to be right on. But for my patients, I tell them about two and a half full revolutions every three to four nights. Um, some dentists might want you to do more or less, so you can talk to him or her. But about two and a half full revolutions every three to four nights is a pretty nice um, mild amount to bring the jaw forward. Uh, so let's get started. I recommend you start by marking the orange-red tool that you receive. There will be two tools. The main one is the orange-red one. The other one is the uh, Allen wrench backup tool in case you lose the flat, broader one. So I take the flat, broader one and I just go ahead and mark an outline of one of them um, and with a black marker. I do that so later on when you do make turns it's going to be easier to see a full revolution or a half revolution. So now it's time to advance the device. So to advance the device, you're going to be inserting the reddish tool into the back end of the tube. Now some devices might have an arrow embedded and some not, but the point is to and turn in the direction of the arrow or counterclockwise or towards yourself. So then that's when the lines come in handy that are marked. So that's one full revolution, that's two, Full revolutions and then one more half and then I take it out. You can then flip it around to the other side, get oriented again, look for the arrow if present. Some devices might not have an arrow, but you're going to again insert that in the back of the tube until it kind of falls into place and once you feel it's in there well, you can start turning it two and a half full revolutions. And then another half and then we remove it and that's where those lines make it much easier to tell when you've gone all the way around. So now that you know the basics that's what you would repeat uh, about twice a week or weekly. Uh, for my patients about every three to four nights they can uh, turn it about two and a half full revolutions uh, but again talk to your provider. Um, when to stop advancing the device. You definitely want to stop when you have any kind of discomfort that doesn't get better especially if you've tried two to three nights at that same setting. Uh, it's, it is normal to have a little bit of discomfort whenever you advance it for some people, but by the second or third night, it should be pretty comfortable. If not, don't keep going further, and you might even want to rewind it a little bit. Um, secondly, um, if your symptoms have stopped, so if your storing has stopped, you're feeling rested, uh, you have less tossing and turning, you know, it just think, you're thinking it's working, unless it was just, uh, prescribed by your dentist to go beyond that point, usually that's a good stopping point until your visit with your dentist and then they can go on and, and talk to you about your next step. And then lastly, for this particular device, the maximum that it will go is seven millimeters. So if you get to the seven millimeter mark on your device, even if you're snoring and your jaw can go further, definitely don't try to force it beyond that level. So seven millimeters is the maximum. Now, if you're ever confused, if you advanced it correctly, over time, you're going to start seeing lines on your device being exposed with numbers on them. 
Here's a sample of both sides that were not correctly advanced. One side has five millimeters, the other side you can see a three millimeter showing, and this is where you would want to level them out, either both to five or both to four or both to three, but you definitely want to level them out. Now one other thing, I strongly recommend using some kind of magnifiers. A lot of my patients actually use an iPhone magnifying feature on their phones, which can really make, with the light and the magnifying, it really blows it up to make it much more easier to see, um, or some kind of cheaters or something. But definitely magnification will be of major help to see those lines. Periodically, it's important to check the screw tightness on both sides of your device. So this is when I recommend about once a month to take that orangish reddish tool and insert it into the screws on both sides. There's a total of four screws and just make sure it's snug to the right is tight and just all four screws that they are, uh, make sure that they are securely fastened. You don't want to strip it. You just want to make sure that they're snug, all four of them. Alternately, you can use the Allen wrench that was provided as a backup and you can use that one, same thing. Um, to the right is tight, and you would insert it into the screw, just like the orange tool. Now one last thing I'd like to address are attaching elastics. Um, I don't recommend for my patients that they use the elastics the first couple weeks of wearing their device. Uh, there's uh, on another video we talk about when it's a great idea to use elastics, but for now I just want to do a quick demo that if your mouth is either kept open or dried out, um, then these sometimes help the mouth stay closed more and you basically attach them to both sides and then they stay on changing them about once a week or so. Now there are many different types of elastics and if you do have a latex allergy you definitely want to make sure that you have latex free elastic. So I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up at the bottom of the video. Uh, make sure you look in the description for links specifically to this device, as well as other tips that can help you uh, get more successful in your journey with oral appliance therapy. Um, and one last thing is make sure that, that you go see your dentist that provided you your oral appliance. Uh, many times you believe it to be working, but it still needs to be tweaked and it needs to get a little bit further advanced um, for a full oxygen resolution of the apnea events. So again, very I can't underscore that enough that even if you believe your device to be working, please check in with your dentist to confirm that it's working at the distance that you left it at, um, as well as just to talk about long-term management of the device and prevention of things and things like that. So don't forget to visit your dentist who provided you with oral appliance. So hope you found it helpful and until next time.